Hi, this is Brian Kim. I'm going to share with you this case of a patient who was referred. This patient had a dense cataract with zonulopathy, and during cataract surgery, there was posterior capsule rupture. And so as a result, the patient was left aphakic, and a thorough vitrectomy was performed, and then the patient was referred for a secondary Yamane sclerofixated lens. And so I'm going to show you my simplified, modified Yamane technique, which I use called the trailing haptic first technique. I externalize the leading haptic through a contralateral limbal incision. But why do I use this lens over other lenses? So number one, the C2 Lucia lens was out for a while, and that was the lens we recommended. It had PVDF haptics, which were very strong. However, it led to a proliferation of techniques which really are harsh on the haptics. And so I don't really feel like this is the best way to do the surgery. You want to be general on the lenses. They're not designed to be manipulated so forcefully. And so uh, there was an issue with the C2 Lucia lens for a while. It was not available. And then there are some issues with the optic haptic junction rotating. So considering these things, I decided to look at other lenses, potential lenses that I can use. And unfortunately, in the United States, the other lenses are made of PMMA. And the Alcon lens, the MA60AC, has a haptic curvature that's too acute. And so it's not running parallel to the limbus, which is the way you want to fixate the haptics with the sclerofixated technique. And so that was out. And so the other lenses really are the Sensar and Technus ZA9003. The Technus lens is an aspheric lens, and it's really debatable as to how important the asphericity is in this situation. Remember, this is not refractive cataract surgery. Patients come in, these are complex eyes, damaged eyes. The pupils may not be normal. They not might... They might not even be reactive. They can be distorted and, and, and stretched out or eccentric. As far as the visual outcomes, there's really very little data that says patients will actually notice that it's better. And so I've used the sensor lens. Remember the glued IOL technique uh, proposed and advocated by Shariath and Agarwal have been primarily used with the sensor lens and they have had excellent results, uh, published data showing the success of the sensor lens. And as a result of that, I've gone with the sensor lens. And what I love about the sensor lens is as long as you execute the technique the way I do it and you don't torque on the haptics and beat it up, you can cannulate the haptic very easily through a 30 gauge thin wall needle and it's very secure and snug. And so the chance of it slipping out is much, much lower which is in contrast to the C2 Lucia lens, which does not hold the haptic very well. In fact, when you're pulling the needle out of the eye, sometimes the haptic will slip back in. And that has to do with that contact between the haptic and the 30 gauge thin wall needle. The sensor lens is a much more tight and snug fit. Now you might say, well, what if then you can't cannulate the haptic into the needle? Well, with my technique, I don't tend to have that trouble. I've heard of people having to use a 27 gauge needle to cannulate with the sensor. In my experience, that has not been the case. I have not had issues with it. Now it does take some subtle getting used to and some nuances and it does take patience. And you're gonna see that in this case. I'm not gonna have a simple easy peasy cannulation of the haptic in the needle with a 30 gauge thin wall needle. I'm gonna to have to take some time and readjust and rotate and you have to get perfect alignment if you're going to do the technique with the sensor lens. You're going to see that in this particular case. And again, uh, very easy to perform. Again, as long as you execute the technique the way I do it, there's really no trauma or traction on the haptics. You're not going to damage the haptics. And again, because I'm passively externalizing the leading haptic with the 25 gauge docking technique, very, very gentle. And again, this is the way I advocate surgeons to learn how to do the Yamani technique. If you want to spread your wings and do it a different way after that, that's perfectly fine. But I really haven't had trouble doing this technique. And this is the way I teach others how to do this technique. This is why I currently perform the Yamani technique this way. So again, you can see this is an aphakic eye. You can see a broken posterior capsule. This patient has been vitrectomized. I'm drying the surface of the eye with a wax cell sponge. And this is the Yamane caliper that Epsilon developed for me. This is the 2.5 millimeter side. And I'm going to try to make marks radial. And I am intentionally not marking it with ink. I'm just indenting. You can see the dark spots. And then I'm going to use the tip of a cannula to mark the dark spots. 2.5 millimeters posterior and 2 millimeters adjacent. By doing it this way, I feel like you get the most discrete marks. And so again, I go to low mag and then try to find 180 degrees apart with that same cannula and then marking the limbus and just double checking. This is all about double checking, triple checking. You want to make sure the marks are exactly the way you want to. And so you'll be able to execute the surgery with a better centered lens implant with reduced risk for tilt.
So again, again, fixed caliper, 2.5 millimeters posterior to the limbus and two millimeters adjacent, and then using that same cannula that's been inked and marking, again, those indentations. You can see perfect radial marks. And these are my incisions, again, first for the AC maintainer, the 20-gauge Lewicki AC maintainer. This is a contralateral limbal incision to externalize the leading haptic. You can see the Wexel sponge didn't allow me enough leverage, and so I switched to the cotton tip, and I'm able to control the eye much better. This is why I like to use a cotton tip to manipulate the eye for my incisions. And these are additional incisions for when I do the vitrectomy and when I do my surgical PI. Making incisions on either side here. And this is some dispersive viscoelastic to coat the corneal endothelium. Again, this patient has been vitrectomized. And this is a three millimeter keratome incision, which again is perpendicular to my marks as well as contra-incisional to my limbal incision for my 25 gauge needle docking technique. That's a 25 gauge needle. The bevel is facing to the right. And this is the right side needle, the 30 gauge thin wall needle. I'm bending it so that the bevel is facing towards me. When I'm orienting it, it's nine millimeters from the tip and that's the way I'm gonna hold it. And so the bevel is facing toward me. This is the left side needle. I'm gonna bend the needle at the hub you want to make sure all of these needles are mounted on a syringe with BSS so you don't get bubbles. And I'm going to bend it 70 to 80 degrees and the bevel is going to face away from me. I'm placing some cohesive viscoelastic to fill the cartridge barrel as well as the centerpiece there where the implant is going to go. You want to spread the wings and then place the sensor lens into the cartridge. You want to make sure the optic is seated. And when it's seated, you're going to push down with the forceps and then you're going to bring the wings together. When you do that, the optic should bend concavely. The leading haptic should go through the barrel and the trailing haptic should come outside of the cartridge. And so I'm going to go ahead and place the lens and cartridge into the injector. You want to push it all the way through. And then you're going to sweep the trailing haptic out. You can see the trailing haptic is now over the injector. And now I'm going to push the plunger. This is a twisty type plunger. You're going to keep twisting until you see the haptic come out. This is a 20 gauge Lewicki AC maintainer. And I'm going to hold it with some Steri strips. And this is, again, the 25 gauge needle in the contralateral limbal incision. My injector through my super temporal main incision. I'm going to go in. My assistant is going to go ahead and advance the lens. She is going to advance the lens and I'm going to ask her to stop. I'm going to dock the haptic on the bevel of the needle. She's going to continue and as she continues to deliver the lens, the haptic is going to be pushed out and then it slides right out of the incision. I take over turn and make sure the optic comes out in the correct orientation and then the trailing haptic comes out of the eye making sure it's sweeping and facing the right side you can see here the ac maintainer is actually stuck underneath the optic of the lens so you can see here with micro forceps i'm going to go ahead and push the optic down and then lift the ac maintainer you don't want anything to interfere with your lens positioning So again, I'm holding the incision, holding the eye in the neutral position, making sure I'm not holding the haptic. You can see here that the mark is moved a little bit. So I'm gonna adjust to that when I stab the sclera, I'm going two millimeters. You can see again, the orientation of the marks has been distorted, but I know my starting point, so I know I'm gonna be fine. I go two millimeters, dive down towards the nerve. You can see now my orientation is nice and radial. Once I have the needle, I turn the AC maintainer off. And then I'm going to go ahead and use my micro forceps to very gently grasp the haptic perpendicular. And I'm going to dock the haptic on the bevel of the needle and slide it in. You can see I rotate 
my needle in such a way that I get it to face the haptic. Remember, the haptic is stuck inside the eye. So the easiest thing to do is use the needle and readjust and ro rotate and adjust the positioning of the needle towards the haptic. That is the most important tip that I can give you. I'm disengaging the needle from the syringe. And then I'm gonna go ahead and internalize the leading haptic and then laying it in the angle. And you're gonna see on this haptic, I have some more trouble. And it's because one, there's a little bit of capsule, posterior capsule that's stuck and getting in my way. But also, again, it's gonna emphasize what I was trying to say. You really can't manipulate the haptic very well. And people tend to try to move the haptic, but it's stuck in the eye, you can't do that. Move the needle instead. So I'm gonna hold the eye in the neutral position with forceps. I'm tunneling from the first mark to the second mark. You can see perfectly how you're able to see that needle going through, diving down towards the nerve, penetrating, and then rotating it into view. My assistant is gonna hold that other needle because it's kind of getting in my way. And then very carefully, I'm gonna grab that leading haptic. You wanna grab it as close to the tip as you can. And see, it's hard to tell, but there's a little bit of capsule in the way. But more importantly, I'm having trouble docking the haptic on the bevel of the needle. And so when you get in this position, remember the haptic is fixed in the eye. You can't really bend the haptic. If you bend the haptic, then you're going to damage the haptic. Don't do that. You can actually then instead rotate the syringe and the needle. So you pay attention to my left hand. I'm, that's the, the hand that's actually doing the maneuvering. And you can see the subtle rotational movement I'm having with that needle. See right there, you pushed in more and I rotated it more. I'm kind of pronating my hand more. And then I was able to dock it, flatten it out, and now it's in. You see, that's really the subtle movements of that maneuver. Don't try to bend the haptic towards the needle because the haptic's stuck in the eye and you're going to damage the haptic. Rotate that needle so that it's positioned in, in better alignment to the haptic. That is a perfect example of that. And so again, I always have my micro forceps ready to grasp that haptic as I'm pulling and withdrawing the needle out. So I'm holding the haptic very gently and then I'm going to cauterize the tip. That's perfect. And then I'm going to go ahead and pull the other needle out. Again, the right side needle is going to be pulled away from me. I'm using micro forceps to grab the haptic as it comes out. And you want to make sure not too much of the haptic comes out. So I'm just kind of grabbing and pushing down. And then I'm going to go ahead and cauterize the tip. Go ahead and cauterize the tip. Now the reason I cauterize it again because there's a little bit of pool of water what I could have done was ask my assistant to just get a wax cell and dry it off, but I go ahead and just lift it a little bit. And so I want to have you pay attention to this. Look at the haptics. Look how flat the haptics are to the eye. This is the way you need to do it. This means that the lens is going to be in perfect position. Why? Because it's have a flat approach and profile on the scleral. That means you have a nice scleral platform, which is the intended positioning of the lens. Remember, when the haptics are in the capsule or bag, they're going to be fairly flat and parallel to the iris plane. When you have a glued IOL technique, the haptic is tunneled through the sclera, which is running parallel to the limbus. That's, again, trying to simulate the capsule bag position. When you're doing the Amani technique, you have to tunnel the needle through the sclera two millimeters like I do. And why? Because that allows that flat profile of the haptic. And that means then the optic is going to sit in the proper position. This is my biggest pet peeve and a, and a big sign of poor technique and which I call the flagpole sign. And the flagpole sign is essentially what I've coined as poor lens technique when the haptic is pointing vertical. And so if you have a haptic that's pointed towards the sky when you're doing surgery, that is terrible technique. That means you don't want, you don't have a good scleral shelf supporting self to hold the haptic. And that also means then on the other side of the lens is the optic. If the haptic is pointed towards the sky, guess what? The optic is pointed towards the nerve and you're gonna get a tilted lens, a vertically oriented lens, whatever, a decentered lens. The point is, is that's a bad technique. This case shows 
a perfectly executed Yamane scleral fixated lens technique. And so you can see when they push the haptic flush to the sclera, another thing you'll notice is it's really difficult to push it in. And why? That's because there's so much sclera that's holding that haptic. There's a lot of resistance. So if you have trouble pushing the haptic into the sclera, flush to the sclera and reapproximating the conge, when you're doing that step and you're seeing a lot of resistance, that means you have an excellently secure scleral fixated lens. So now this is a surgical PI. I have a particular setting for that. It's a fixed 30 cut rate, IOP 50, aspiration is fairly low, vacuum is fairly high, and the cut rate is low in order to help get a nice, small, discrete PI. You're not doing a vitrectomy with that maneuver. You're just trying to make a small iridectomy. And so now we're doing anterior vitrectomy, and then after I do anterior vitrectomy and I make sure that there's no vitreous in the anterior chamber, I go ahead and use the vitrector to perform IA. And so I go to cortex mode and remove all the viscoelastic from the anterior chamber. Obviously, this is not the ideal instrument for this. You get a lot of ore locking with the vitrector, but I was able to do a pretty good vitrectomy. And then I go ahead and like to place a tenonylon suture through my main incision. I always do this anytime you have vitreous, you just never know. And you don't want to have a situation where you're done with the surgery. You see them post-operatively and the patient has a little wick of vitreous to the wound. And so I do believe that even though you do a perfect surgery and you hydrate in your incisions, there's always potential for some fluid egress. So I always like to place a tenonylon suture through my wound. And doing it this way, it's kept me out of trouble and reduced the risk for vitreous to the wound after surgery. So again, remember what I said. Number one, the technique for the sensor lens, externalizing the leading haptic through a contralateral limbal incision with a 25 gauge needle docking technique. By doing it this way, you don't touch the tip of the haptic, which is the most important part of not touching because that's when you can crimp it. And a little bit of crimping of the tip can really make it almost impossible to cannulate to the needle. Trust me, I know this because I've done it and it's really, really hard. And so that's why I developed this technique, a no touch technique, a passive 25 gauge needle docking technique to externalize the leading haptic through a contralateral limbal incision. Again, you know my trailing haptic first modification and I'm able to execute the cannulation of the haptic through the right side needle first. Again, you wanna dock the haptic on the bevel of the needle, flatten it out and then advance. You want to use the 30 gauge thin wall needle. It's nice and snug and tight. It will not slip out when you use this needle. And then on the left side, you saw how I struggled a little bit. But remember, the biggest mistake people do is they try to manipulate the haptic. They bend the haptic. They do this to the haptic. They abuse the haptic. And you can do that with C2 Lucia, but you can't with this lens. The PMA haptics will bend and they'll break. And so don't bend the haptic, which is poor technique. What you do is you just reposition the needle. Because it's outside the eye, it's so much easier to reposition the needle and so that you can align the needle with the haptic. Again, you're adjusting the needle for the haptic, not the other way around. And you saw on the left side needle a perfect illustration of that point. I was able to maneuver, I pronated my hand, I tilted it and rotated the needle in such a way that I was able to align that haptic with the needle, dock the haptic on the bevel of the needle, and I was able to finally advance it. And then I was able to pull it out again, nice snug holding of that haptic. When I pulled it out, I was able to cauterize the tips. And again, finally, when you saw those haptics laying on the sclera, you saw how flat they were. And that's because I was able to approach it at a low profile, 10 degrees. When I placed the needles through the sclera, I had a low profile. I tunneled two millimeters and then I dive straight down. And that low profile and length of the Tunneling of the needle through the sclera allows that nice and flat profile. Remember, the flagpole sign of the haptic is really terrible. That's a bad technique. If you encounter that, you need to start over. Don't leave the haptic that way. Don't leave the lens that way. If you have the flagpole sign, that means the haptic's pointed to the sky. That means your optic is pointed towards the nerve. That is poor technique. You'll have a tilted lens. You're gonna have a decentered lens and you don't really need to do that. That's not really good technique. Just start over and do it again and make sure you get a nice flat profile to the lens position and the patient will do very well. This patient post-op day one, I didn't refract her, but she was already seeing 2050 uncorrected and even in the midst of all the manipulation with the surgery and she was extremely happy you can imagine she was aphakic for several weeks 
And so again, post-op day one, 2060, very happy. Again, without a refraction, I'll see her again in a few weeks. But the point of the matter is, is if you execute the surgery with this technique, using the Sensar lens, you don't have to worry about any potential manufacturing issues with other lenses. And again, because it's a nice snug holding of the haptic with the needle, it's not going to slip out for a variety of reasons. This is why I prefer the Sensar lens. And I think you should try my modified Yamane technique for the next time you have an aphakic eye and they need a scleral fixated lens. So I hope this was helpful to you. And I thank you for your attention.